this is it today is the final gurkha day so i have my son with me right now this is my little son charmander you guys can see him in the background we're going to explore the final version of this series this has been fun i do have a regular gurkha in here that is now going to be joining my humidor so i'm gonna take it out i'm gonna keep the box i'll probably i don't know i was, I was probably still put everything in wrapper and whatever make it all look nice so preserve the actual box itself it looks nice i mean i could low-key make it like a humidor or just a product placement in my background or when i whenever i do move and get like a bigger background with more cabinet space and other sorts i could display these things more beautifully in the background the series is done just no more wow wow same should happen again where the ban got taken away so i gotta make sure i put it back properly there you go this is a beautiful looking cigar The good thing about the cigar, I'm gonna just give you all the information now. This is the last video. We're gonna focus strictly on the cigar itself. This is a six and a half by 60 Figarado. The wrapper you see in front of your face is a Mexican San Andres. Beneath that is the binder. Beneath that beautiful looking wrapper you see right there is a Cameroon binder. And lastly, the filler you see right here in this little nipple whatever you call this bottom part the filler inside of there come on the filler inside of there that looks like my thumb it's nicaraguan this is three different countries msrp y'all should know you should have already seen the last five parts if you have not every single year of the dragon through gurkha is 25 dollars so the epc 25 dollars the agent fernandez 25 dollars regular gurkha $25. Oscar Valadez, $25. Oliva, $25. Everything is front forward or forward front. And the last thing about the cigar is this is also a medium plus. Now it's time to shut the fuck up and smoke the cigar. Well, smell. Oh, wait. There's a sweetness to the wrapper. I'm not cookie dough. And this is very sweet chocolate note to the wrapper. <sighs> I actually like it. And a slight earthiness too. I want to make sure this is the best for last. I don't know why I skipped the Oliva and went straight to Oscar than this one. Even though Oscar is the last box to be available to be shipped. I think July or June is when it gets shipped. But I don't know why I picked the order I did. I don't know. I'm just brain works sometimes not really doesn't compute often but i'm actually kind of happy hopefully because that oscar just just watch the video it's time for a circumcision for figurados i tend to do three cuts but you know cutters that have a back into it i tend to do three cuts max Sometimes four may be the solution, but just from doing that little fast cold draw, wasn't going for taste, just for the draw test. It seems like it was draw smooth. I'm kind of surprised that I actually had the straw like feeling to it already with not much resistance. The fact that it's a nipple tip. It's almost like a ceiling titty, but on a cigar. And I know what I mean by ceiling titties. Ceiling titties are these type of light fixtures in your home. I call them ceiling titties. I'm not that well versed in the whole contractor field. I don't know much tools and all that kind of sorts. My dad failed to be a dad and teach me this stuff. You know, he is a contractor. So because of him, 
I just know these as feeling titties. So now this is cigar titty or a cigar nipple. So despite having a cigar nipple, the draw it seems really nice. Not much resistance. Eh? Get into it, but cold draw. Cold draw is very chocolatey. And part of me kind of feels scared because this is a Leva. And they have this whole series, the Melanium and the V. And it's how I kind of been seeing the whole Melanium or the V series is just repurposed. Every single year to release a new V or new Melanium V series. And it's just a slightly tweaked version of whatever they did last year. But it's almost like that famous saying, if it's not broke, don't fix it. I get it. They're very focused on a direction. It's like Padrones. Padrones, I haven't had every single one of their lines, but majority of the lines I have had, taste notes tend to be quite similar. Intense chocolate taste, intense espresso taste, and very smooth, jaw is very nice. Most of my experience with Padrones has been the same. But again, they taste phenomenal. They taste amazing. It's almost the same mind concept I think Oliva has, just as the Patron line, where if it's not a broken system, why fix it? Why tweak it more? Why drastically change stuff? The fact that I got chocolate from the aroma and I got chocolate from the cold draw, I just hope it's not a repurposed, slightly more you know, Oliva V, Melanium or whatever. I just hope this is a way for Oliva could be creative and not depend on, you know, a non-broken system. Let's get this done. Whoa. Nice spice. Ooh, chocolatey. When that nipple broke, sounds so weird out of context. When the nipple, when, yeah, when the wrapper broke to open up more of the cigar, it, the cigar whistled at me. Like it's trying to holler at me. Whoa. This is actually real flavorful. Wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's for the spice. I feel it on my tongue. I haven't even like really retro or I wasn't really paying attention to my retro yet, but I already feel spice on the back of my throat. This one was ice spice. Don't tell my wife. Shh. I'm getting this toasty chocolate. Lights of bits of earth. A very nice sweetness. I'm not sure I'm confusing the chocolate with a little bit of like espresso in the very background. I'm getting this also black pepper mixed with a little bit of red pepper. This is quite nice. Oh, this cigar tastes like this the whole way through. We're in store for a good video. One thing I'm not liking is that that slight little tunnel in the middle. Because in the shadows, I'm not talking about the group I'm part of, but hopefully it doesn't affect the cigar in any ways, because right now I'm drawing and not really drawing well. When I get to a point where that tunnel seems to be kind of lessened, I'll show you guys the ash. Because it, to me, it looks white, but because of that tunnel, it kind of hides its true beauty. There's a slight honey element to it, too. This is what I mean. I'm just going to say this now. If Oliva can make cigars like this, they get it. But they're operating in a system to guarantee success. And kind of 
which is fine. It's almost like an all elements of every type of format. Yep. Chocolate. Dapples of honey. Spice. Sweetness. Meeting the full. Very well balanced cigar. Loving it so far. That's all I can gather at the moment. I'll see you guys in the second third. So I'm at this stage of the cigar. It's getting more sweeter. The black pepper and red pepper I was getting before kind of diminished. And now I'm getting this very, very sweet cigar. I'm getting like this very bready, toasty, chocolatey, some type of sugar, like a brown sugar. It might sound weird, but the caramelized sugar you get from flan. That's what I'm kind of getting from this cigar. It's very sweet. So it's almost like you're smoking a chocolate flan. Just like the other Year of the Dragons from Gurkha, this is not leaving much of an aftertaste. The Oscar one left a very long finish on the roof of my mouth, and I tasted it for hours after the review was done. It's a very crisp sweetness that just lasts maybe a good 10 to 15 seconds after the puff and then starts to just disintegrate there may be a little bit of spice hidden in the background a little bit because you tend to kind of feel it just ever so slightly on the back of your throat and a tad bit on the back of the roof of your palate this is overall a great cigar so far i'm quite enjoying this everything is very just just right this is the whole goldilocks effects that i kind of like it's not too much it's not too less it's just right i made this example to another cigar i forgot which one it was i think it was the aj fernandez but this is just like the aj fernandez in a sense where it's not overwhelming your taste palette and it's not underwhelming your taste palette this gives you a great amount of sweetness that's enjoyable well, see you guys in the last third. I'm on the last third of the cigar. Thank you for those dying down a lot. But nonetheless, this was an enjoyable cigar. I love the sweetness. I'm usually a sucker for three kind of components in the cigar. It is something very sweet, something very rich in espresso or coffee, or just things that just give you a little roller coaster ride. This was very sweet. Let's look into the ash. That is mostly white with little dabble of gray. With a little bit of black ash right there. Nonetheless, quality constructed cigar. What I say is $25. I'll give it 21. Some components could have been more, but I'll get more specifics when I break down with the ratings. So with that being said, the last third basically has the same taste notes as I had before. A little bit less on everything else, more watered down. It still has its chocolate. It still has its sweetness. It still has a little bit of a sugary taste notes to it. It's, I like it. I like it. It's a dessert cigar. 100% a dessert cigar. This is something I would love to have after having a very hearty meal. Most likely either steaks, lamb, all that kind of sorts. Anything that's kind of on the meaty side, you want something sweet to go after that meal. Even if it's a burger. When I make burgers, I tend to make my patties a little bit more thicker because I like to stuff cheese in the middle of the patty while having another slice of cheese on top. If you feel like the video is a little bit more rushed, it's because this is the last Gurkha. Meaning at the end of this video, I'm gonna break down which one is my favorite Gurkha, which one is my least favorite Gurkha. If you watch all five of my videos, you should know which order I'm gonna go with when it comes to my most favorite to my least favorite if you haven't watched it then i'm gonna give you a second after my ratings go we'll click off and watch it that being said let's go by appearance the figurado was gorgeous let's go by appearance you have the band the orange topaz like color it's not that bad it doesn't really stand out to me but the actual cigar how it looked like in the very beginning as you saw with the Figurado, the six and a half by 60, that was 
beautiful how it looked with the compact the little nipple at the very ending it was a beautiful looking cigar i'll deduct some points from the band doesn't really stand out to me but the actual design of the vitola looked gorgeous it looked like it was perfectly crafted i'm gonna give the appearance i'll say a seven and a half the band felt like it didn't do its justice that color scheme to be more specific i wish it was a little bit more of a vibrant color or maybe like a darker deeper color for the construction there's not much to complain about draw flawless when it comes to the smoke output very nice quite a bit of smoke comes out when it comes to the puffing and draw color the ash slightly gray partly white looks amazing how the figurado looked and how it just kept on being persistent not much canoeing this slights unevenness not overwhelmingly uneven basically everything about the cigar was amazing with that being said i'm gonna give the construction a solid eight lastly taste notes i'm gonna give it a seven and a half and the reason why i'm giving it a seven and a half is because yes it was very sweet it didn't really bounce every third didn't change too much it kept to its nature very chocolatey very sweet very syrupy very toasty very bready all those amazing components that makes a great dessert it's still consistent in that kind of way maybe one third was a little bit more chocolate second third was a little bit more bready and toasty and syrupy and sugary then the last third you see combine all of those elements and but more on the lighter side so it could be a nice finish so I think seven and a half kind of gives it justice. I wish I taste a little bit more of all the other elements and not having it more like a background, but it was still nice. It was still quite an enjoyable experience. I would not mind having this again. I honestly do not. Question is, would I get a box of this? I may not do a box, but I would not mind a five pack. If there's any five packs available in the future, I'm down to get a five pack. That would be what, 125 bucks? compared to spending 250 for a whole box of these they're great for after a hearty meal but to commit for a box of these cigars mm, i will keep it as if i have no choice i would do it if there's no five packs i'll probably commit to a box but it's not something i will want to go for a box with but i would not mind with all that math adding up the overall rating of the cigar lands on a 7.6 meaning this cigar is the ash it's a great cigar. My review for all Gurkhas are done. Let's get to the part where I'm excited to talk about and you guys have been waiting for me to reveal. Which Gurkha is my number one pick and which Gurkha is my last pick? Let's make this interesting. I'm gonna go by appearances, do my list of five. My most favorite for construction wise, most likely Vitola. And then lastly, taste notes. So my most favorite appearance was the AJ Fernandez. Something about that green, that emerald to the band just felt different. I love that emerald green. That looked badass. It looked very nice. You don't really see much cigars going with that type of shade of green. It looked very nice and very elegant. My second choice for appearance is the EPC. That black onyx gorgeous gorgeous on the cigar it truly stands out especially with the direction epc is going now the epc maduro the epc encore black now we have two more encore blacks coming out the encore black newer and the encore black unico one their theme at the moment is maduro their theme at the moment is dark cigars they're going with a lot of black cigars but for them to have a black band kind of shows and kind of tease what they're focusing on this year my next favorite appearance was the one by Artista, their original blend. That red and the golden dragon, that's just beautiful. You have the hat that matches it. You have the box that matches the band. That red, also beautiful. Next, I feel like the yellow stood out a little bit more compared to this orange. Because with the yellow, you can think of a yellow jacket wasp. You can think about the Bumblebee Camaro. Have that yellow with the golden dragon and that black outlines amazing too lastly and unfortunately number five will be the oliva band the orange does not really scream at me 
which is why I think I kind of left it for last because it never really caught my eye. I kept on looking past it. The other cigars looked way more appeasing to me because of the band color. Now construction. For construction wise, I'm gonna just focus mostly on the Vitolas. My number one pick, honestly, the Oliva. Something about that Figurado, that six and a half by 60, how it looked in the very beginning, if you rewind quickly back to the intro, that's not a bad, it looked very nice. It was very tight, constructed well, how it looked. Number two, we have AJ Fernandez. Another Figurado, this one was box pressed. Something about the Figurado looks amazing. I just love that kind of craftsmanship into a cigar. It looks different. It doesn't look like your typical Toros, which is just basically rounded. Number three, Gurkha by La Atista, which is their first blend. That one was more lighter. All the other cigars had a little bit more of a darker leaf, but this one was lighter. The very first blend was more on the Habano side. But same thing, it was a Figurado. And just the burn was amazing. The whole premise of all this kind of stuff, just awesome. Second to last, so you have EPC. Second to last, EPC. That dark wrapper was so beautiful. It was the darkest cigar in the bunch. It had its uniqueness to it. That caught my eye, which I enjoyed quite a bit. The black band, the slight resistance to the draw, it was awesome. The other three cigars kind of outshined. Lastly, Oscar. Oscar cigar seems a little bit more atypical to a cigar. Not really much uniqueness to it. It was just your classic Toro. It kind of felt like the stepchild of the bunch where it's there, but you don't really pay attention that it's there. That's kind of how I felt like with the cigar. It's just, it got overshadowed. Now the most crucial one, taste notes. Number one, Gurkha with La Artista. That first blend, something about that hay, something about just the sweetness and just it feeling like a spicy Cuban, the roller coaster of taste notes. It was amazing. That is the main cigar I will 100,000% go for a box, maybe two. It was extremely enjoyable. That is why I am happy to have an additional one. That one is going to be for a rainy day for a very nice event. Number two, Oliva. Surprising enough, this Oliva was amazing. I love the sweetness. I'm a sucker for sweetness. And the taste note hit. This is the main one that I actually felt like this could possibly get a box. It may not 100%. If I have no choice, I will go for it. I want to deny it. I want to like, eh, meh. if I cannot get a fire pack, I get a box. Simple as that. Number three, AJ Fernandez. The AJ Fernandez cigar had the spiciness, had a lot of components that I enjoyed that it may possibly get a box. That one has a little bit more hesitation. It was still a good cigar. Number four, EPC. To me, EPC has such a high standard to cigars for me. That's one of my favorite brands of all time. I tend to go for the pledges. I tend to go for the alliances. Pledge of Allegiance is one of my favorites. So a lot of the lines, well, a lot of the core lines of EPC are in my top tens when it comes to go-to cigars. So I had high expectation on the cigar, but I felt like it was watered down a lot. It was like a pledge and a La Historia watered down. So I felt kind of disappointed, but it still was not really bad of a smoke. So I wouldn't mind maybe getting another one of EPC. Not a box, not a five pack, maybe just buy two max, have one to smoke, have one to, to age, to have in my collection. That's just how I felt about the EPC. And lastly, Oscar. That cigar just sucked. It was just amazing for the first eighth. And then the last seven eighth of the cigar was just earthy and dirty and swampy. And that's it. So the Oscar taste notes was not really it for me. But overall, I guess you could say number one pick, Gurkha with La Atista, which is the first one. Second one would be AJ Fernandez. Third one would be Oliva. Fourth, EPC. Fifth, Oscar.
That is my official list of my favorites of the Gurkha line. Hope you guys enjoyed all five of my reviews of the Gurkha Year of the Dragons. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's review of the Gurkha and Oliva's Year of the Dragon. With that being said, hope you guys enjoyed today's review. Until next time, as always, I love your faces and I'm out. Peace.